Okay, I started the recording already. Okay, great. Okay. Yes. Thank you, everyone. We are um, getting into our home stretch, and thank you so many of you for hanging in there with us. I, I do feel like so far we've been doing what we set out to do today. Um, thank you for the engagement. Thank you again for being here. Uh, now we are going to talk about what we are doing because again, none of this is, uh, information is nothing if you actually don't do anything with it. So I would like to introduce you to our executive director, Zerka Abid. Assalamu alaikum everybody. Um, thank you so much for this fabulous program that uh, Sister Dorothy Hassan has launched for us and alhamdulillah for everybody who has participated. I am um, I'm the founder and executive director of my project USA. And uh, um, I am unfortunately today has been so tied up with some family business that I had to take care of that I have missed the morning programs, which I am going to watch uh, later the videos. But I know and I've seen some and I know Sister Zubeda Vani, Dr. Kimberly Porter, and I heard some of Dr. James Jeffers program and I am just loving it. I am so incredibly humbled and excited to see this, um, you know, that finally our organization in its sixth year has entered in a phase where not only we can have our own um, celebration of uh, Black History Month, but we are also making changes and ready to work with our uh, Black leaders and our, our trailblazers hand in hand while we are fostering and mentoring um, young people from immigrant and refugee communities to um, walk that, uh, you know, that journey, to go on that journey that um, our ancestors taken. And uh, I'm going to talk a bit about where, what my project USA has done, where we have, you know, we have been. I don't have a fancy um, slideshow for this event today, but uh, hopefully um, I won't bore you. Um, I just want to start something with like really, um, what is Black history for me? I'm a uh, Pakistani uh, Muslim woman um, raised in um, Pakistan, came to America at the age of 26, have been here for half of my life now, and still learning. And the first uh, entrance I had when I came in uh, America was in Durham, North Carolina, in Masjid e Badr Rahman, a small school, a small masjid, with all my Afro-American brothers and sisters. I was the only non-Black person in the masjid in the school. And I just loved it and I learned that that was my first home in America to be in, in any professional setting and also in an Islamic setting. Um, so that's where my roots started. But before then, growing up, Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali was the figure. I still remember fourth grade. I'm in this Pakistan, my school. There was this competition between Muhammad Ali and I, I that was this Japanese wrestler who was wrestling. And I remember the whole school sitting in front of the TV and my principal is praying, oh Allah, make our Muslim brother win and all of that. And I'm like, and to this day, that was that. So it's like that man, did not just influence the people in America, the black people in America, but the whole world and the Muslim world and internationally, you know, the work he did with his influence and his the work. So that that connection has already was already built when we were growing up there. But uh, but what I really want to say is that when Sister Dorothy said that we want to have, uh, you know, we should have this month. And um, for me, because I came at the age of 26, never went to schools here and anything, question is like, wh what does that mean? And that's where like we started this conversation and Sister Dorothy she took the lead and she got Sister Zubeda Ghani who did our first session today. And then we had Dr. Kimberly Porter and answering those tough questions. And I saw some of the portion I saw this morning was when Nadeen was asking this question about uh, you know, the book selection. And I'm like, this is exactly why we have Sister Dorothy. This is exactly why we have this conversation and we are doing the right thing. Because it's not about, this is like, you know, it's not a social services organization that has just started a food pantry or a reading program just because we uh, wanted to do something. No, there is a whole history of it and there is whole need of it. And there is a whole movement that this movement that was already launched you know, 60 years ago, 70 years ago, that's been going on with the black leaders have fought that fight. 
where is, what is the role of immigrant and refugee people and people like me and people, our children? How do we understand? How do we be, make sure that we are not disrespectful? Because we have so many questions and confusion when we talk about Black Lives Matter, when we talk about all these questions. You know, there is always, as soon as I open my mouth, I know that I'm going to offend somebody. I'm going to miscommunicate to something because, you know, I, in last 15, 20 years as an activist, I have been to programs that, uh, you know, um, Federal Teachers Association with other programs. And when I learned first time that in Alabama, a seven-year-old child would be chained, would be chained for just, you know, uh, wearing wrong color of socks. And I was like, this could not be true. And then we searched it and researched it. And it was true. And it was, it was shared with us from the teachers union. And I could not believe that. So then when we started my project USA in Columbus, and we learned that in Columbus, the youth incarceration rate is in, in Columbus is one of those cities where you have youth incarceration at the top. So many young people are thrown in, in, in prison. So then, and then have being the second largest um, city in uh, Columbus, being second largest city in the Somali uh, refugee population. And then having another thousands of from Iraq and other places and non-Muslims and Muslims both. Here, the struggle is real. How do we make sure that that movement that our black brothers and sisters and mothers and dads, they did. How do we make sure that not only we support them, but we build our movement next to them, shoulder to shoulder, and we supplement, we complement each other. How do we build that relationship? So this event today is definitely, is definitely that first step. When Sister Zubeda is explaining to us that why, to people like me who is an activist who can do it, so many things, but still we have to understand what does that mean? How do we be respectful and do the right job? And that's why we want to, and then when we created our first flyer, and if Sister Dorothy, you could share on your screen that flyer that we made for this month, which was, you know, is all about what we are talking about. We say that we are celebrating, whether we educate, we empower, we shelter, uh, we do everything to make sure that we are also making history. And it's not being disrespectful, but to show that we are following your path. You are leaders, we respect you, we follow you. We have seen how much work you guys have done, how you have changed the world. And, and we are here to learn from you, to follow your path, to work with you. And then at some point, maybe some of us will be leading the whole community hand in hand. And we are already stepping in that direction. And Sister Dorothy said, you know, why don't you talk about that? And I said, I will do it. But after the speeches that have, done, have been done since morning, I'm just, you know, trying to add what an immigrant, you know, mom from Pakistan uh, and an activist in America can share with you with, with, with complete honesty and sincerity that, you know, I'm not a champion of these things. I don't claim to be one. But yes, what we can all do and what this organization is all about when we named it My Project USA, in which My is for Muslim youth, if you look into it. And then we say hashtag My Project is USA, is because we want to make sure that our immigrant and refugee youth, whose parents are always talking about back home, it's always, I mean, in, in our homes, you know, people are watching their own, uh, is Syrian uh, TV, is Pakistani TV, is Indian TV, the politics is being followed, what is happening there? more than what is happening here in Columbus, here in America, here in Ohio. With that, you know, how do we make sure that my, our children, our young people, our young adults are ready to lead the mainstream community? It's beyond our masjid. It's beyond our small comfort zone that we always talk about. That we always feel like, you know, mashallah, subhanallah, fi sabirillah, you do this, you do that. But then, you know, where is the leadership? Because it doesn't matter if a child is hungry on the street. It doesn't matter if a homeless person needs a coat. I don't care if that person is Muslim or not Muslim. That doesn't matter. 
the child is hungry is the main thing that matters to us and it doesn't matter what is their faith it doesn't matter what is their ethnicity people asked me that you are not somali so why are you working with these and some people actually accused me for that but you know what i'm a muslim mother that's who i am and i have been raised in learning about you know all these sahaba and the companions and in pakistan we protested for everybody whatever happened all over the world we always organized ourselves did fundraiser so that's who we are so when this organization is you know what we are taking the direction is actually our main goal is that we make sure that our children our youth our young people and our older leaders also are trained they understand what are the issues in america they understand what are the issues right here in our home and why we do that why we do that we do it because that's exactly what islam tells us to do that's exactly why we do it islamically i if i am in america i am not responsible what is happening in karachi right now what is happening in pakistan right now i am not islamically responsible for that if people are hungry there i am not islamically responsible i don't live there my tax doesn't go there i'm not part of that country allah subhana wa taala made sure that i migrated from there he brought me to this country he placed me in columbus that's may where my risk was so with that if this is where i am my investment i am paying my taxes here my children are going in here my my grandchildren will be attending a school in this country that's where is my project this is my project and with that my brothers and sisters black and brown white and and yellow whatever they are they are my brother so with that mentality when our immigrant and refugee youth and adults we organize and reorganize ourselves that's where we will be starting making you know those history and that's where my project's journey is started and if sister dorothy can you are you ready to share that flyer is there a technical issue Yes there is just one second that's fine um i wanted to share the flyer because all those pictures that i want to talk about are on that flyer and and the reason is this is something that is so important to understand that when my project usa is or is in the org in the community is beyond just passing the food food pantry was important all these issues were discussed i heard here and there that you know food insecurity in our neighborhoods and in our city the challenges of drugs and crimes the challenges of you know schools to prison pipelines the challenges all of those challenges that are by systematic discrimination or negligence or whatever you want to call it has been there in our systems then we when we started my project usa our main challenge was that how do we make sure that our children are safe from these drug dealers and pimps on the street so we in first 5 years we addressed all of those things one by one and we are still addressing but now we have an infrastructure we started a food pantry so far we have passed mashallah 4. about 4.5 million meals and snacks with the help of our college student volunteers mashallah but now that is going to be a food market so we started a sister samira samira mahmud and her friends they started a reading warrior program in wedgwood community why because there were so many homicides there were so many shootings there were children you know neglected there were children who didn't have food and this little girl a high school student started this program is amazing leader she started this program and you can see her right here on this you know blue picture with for you know um, um for life event you can see that and she is right there speaking but she was the one who started that and when she started 52 children were attending her reading program at that time and she was the one who saved so many and made sure that they were doing the right thing and they were going into their um, in in the schools and they were passing their grades this is in between of 17 shooting and seven homicides in one neighborhood in seven months and sister samira mahmud stood up for that 
and she was the one who stood up and she gathered her friends, Isha Hussain, Asha Bakari, um, Fadumu, you know, Muhammad, all of those different friends, they came together. They were helping. I'm, I'm not mentioning everybody's name. There's a list of them. But these, are, these were our, those trailblazers, those may people who stood for their community and they started reorganizing. And yes, they, they, they might not be at that level where we are, when we are celebrating the history, but I felt it was so important for everybody to understand that our immigrant and refugee communities are struggling the similar ways. They have the struggles. We can learn so much from our, our black leaders. And at the same time, our black leaders and our white and everybody, our community look into and see that what kind of history these young people without resources, without anything have been making. Then you can see on the top of this flyer, you see so Coach Sayat Muhammad is speaking at the city council meeting, accepting a, a first um, grant from city council for the soccer program. This young man, 16 year old, came to my office and he said, Sister Zarka, can you take my team in? And I'm like, why, what was going on? And he's like, I have children. My friends have been lost in drugs and gangs. Younger kids who are playing with me, but we don't have money to buy a uniform. We don't have money to go in this. They didn't, basically it was winter and they didn't have money to pay for indoor soccer. And he was worried that if he wouldn't put them in the program, some of them by the end of winter will be lost in drugs and gangs. And that's why he was so desperate that he came to me and he told me that he went to other places as well. And as soon as he told me, I said, Sayat, of course, of course we will do it. And we paid for that. And Alhamdulillah, we did that. And today, today that program is 100 kids on weekly basis are in program. Right now, in this winter, every single day, our children are playing. And today, this morning, right now, our coaches are with our team who are in a game right now. We are attending these. And the first game, the Mosul League, they went, and you see this picture down there at the corner, on the right side corner, um, um, you know, at the bottom, you see this picture is the championship. This team who did not have anything, nothing, no resources, just Coach Sayad and some other volunteer coaches were, were helping them. And we were only able to, we got some donations of t-shirts, we got some other equipments, and we were just trying to struggle. My Project USA is a very humble organization. We didn't have enough resources. Then city council came in and they supported us. And we were able to pay for some of the coaches' time. And Alhamdulillah, we started buying equipment. And this team, first time, they went into Mosul League, Mid-Ohio Select Soccer League, and they won the championship. Our U13 team won against so many other teams who were well-funded, who were coming from very affluent neighborhoods, and our team won, and won big time. That joy, that happiness, it was not just for these kids, these 20 kids who were in the team. It was a testimony that when we organize our children, when we do that, things happen. And that is what is the most important thing. Then you see on this picture, these girls that, you know, I was talking about our reading warrior leaders were at the second right under, um, under Sayat. And these are, there's Khadija Ibrahim, and then you see Samira Mohammed, Asha Hussain, Isha Hussain, Asha, and all others. These are our trailblazers. They started the program, and today, when uh, Isha, when sorry, when um, Samira had to move on to her college, uh, at that point, Sister Raifa, Raifa Al Hajali, she was already engaged in the program. She stood up and she said, "I will take care of the Reading Warrior program." And today, we have a full. Reading Warrior, actually two level teams. They are providing the tutoring, they are doing the reading program, they come in the neighborhood, they go, they do activities, now they show up at their games, at their soccer games. These are amazing young people and they are so diverse. If you go and look into our teams, you will see the diversity right there. You have Arabs, you have um, Pakistani, Indians, uh, Urdu is speaking, Arabic is speaking, Fulani, all different people are in our team along with the black young people, white young people, we have everybody in our team and they are helping. 
we are, my project USA has a pool of about 500 volunteers who help in so many different ways. And which is why with the help of just three, just three full, uh, three full time staff and two or three part time staff, we served 40,000 clients last year. It's mind blowing if you think about it, it is. And then you see these young two people right at the bottom next to our logos. This is, this is Abdi Bakari and Kali Ahmad. These two young people are amazing and there are much more. This is when they were they appeared on TV. They were being interviewed for how they were changing the Wedgwood community. They were the ones who were going door to door. They were reaching out. They reached out to every single apartment in Wedgwood community in the midst of all that terror. There is, it, it was quite dangerous to go door to door. There were streets in the neighborhood. There were houses, there were buildings in the neighborhood where there were you know, concern that, you know, something can happen and we would not send them alone. We would send them in team. We would, but at the same time, the issue was that if we did not reorganize our own teams, we wouldn't be anywhere. We have to, if we have to make a history, there is a struggle. There are wars, there are movements, there are protests, there are, you know, fighting, there is shooting, there is bloodshed, everything that you see in black history and what you see now and when President Obama became the president and we walked on, and I was one at the, his first inauguration walking on the, on the roads and celebrating, it is, it is, it does not happen in one day. It takes a whole community. It takes generations. And what I'm trying to tell to my, these immigrant refugee youth and the community that yes, our, our work is hard. We are getting there, we are doing, there are challenges. I am the founder and executive director. I sit with you know top class people. I sit on a state level people. I have spoken in, in the places where I was key you know, the speaker and I, we had national leadership on the stage. But at the same time, I'm the one who will clean. I will, I'm the one who will sweep the floor. I will set the table. I will sit down. I will do whatever needs to be done because we are part of a movement. This is not a corporate culture. I am the one who will give my shoulder and we will cry together if somebody has passed away, something, some tragedy has happened. And we are the one who will celebrate and we will you know, do whatever we want to do to celebrate. So these are the things that we all have to understand that yes, we are here. Maybe our circumstances are different. Maybe our backgrounds are different, but we all can be part of this amazing story of this country. We are all part of this fabric. And that's what my Project USA wants to see in each one of you. When I wrote five years mission um, statement and program, um, planning for my project USA before I even announced it. It was October of 2014. I took one week to write a five-year plan. And there, there were five things that we wanted to do. Um, my goals were that this, these five things want to, I want to see this happening. Among those were, one of those was young, young people will be storyteller. They will tell their story. So just this program that I was watching right before me was, you know, Dr. Jeffers was talking about the hip hop, you know, history of, you know, how it, it made a difference. That's exactly, that's exactly, you know, over the influence of these celebrities, the work that has been done, the influence of the doctors and researchers and people who are doing, that's exactly what the young people in these refugee community, in our Somali Bantu community, in our Somali, Iraqi, Kurdian, Pakistanis, all of those people who are not yet connected, that's where we want to see. So one of the things was the, that they will be storyteller. Another thing that we have in our mission statement is that we want to make sure that our children are become the mainstream community leaders, the advocate. They represent the community. So when we started working in Wedgwood, our major challenge was that there was no advocacy. There was nobody who was actually community leader who would go and work with us. There were some people, they are very hardworking people. I respect them wholeheartedly. Somali Bantu elderly people are amazing people. I'm impressed by them because look at the hardship they have gone through. 
being a refugee, being, you know, re, you know, placed in a place by a UNO, being here, stuck here, not understanding language, not, not understanding culture, and then raising these kind of children, mashallah, the amazing children that we have now that are working in our organization, it's amazing a story. But still, the fact was that when we started, we didn't have elderly people because our, you know, elderly community, community members didn't go to college and schools. And even if they did, the, the language was a barrier. So when it was that you have to go to city council or you have to do other things, we didn't have somebody who was actually working in the community because those who could have were also taking care of their jobs. They, are taking, I mean, they have to take care of their families too. So we said, I said to myself and to our team is that we will inshallah find the people, young people from this community. And when we find them, then we will, inshallah, we will teach them how to be an advocate. And our goal is not just for this community, but everybody, the reading warriors, for example, our team, the pantry team. This is all college students. Right now, our executive team is about 25 members. And most of them, it's only, I think, me and some few people. Sister Dorothy is a young person, so I won't include in her in my age group. But I'm talking about the younger people. We have about, I'm sure, about 90% of our team is you know, under 30 years old. So these 30 years people are or under people are our main badge that my hope and organization mission is that these are the people who will be playing a role in the mainstream community. And how is that gonna happen? That we are teaching them the advocacy. They are the one who go. So when Akali or Abdi or, uh, or all the young people, Isha and Samira and Asha, they all have gone to city council. They all have advocated for their own community. They have talked to mayor, they have talked to city council members, they have represented, they have talked in the, in the programs. And now eventually, Alhamdulillah, and I know Sister Dorothy has removed the flyer, but the last thing and the most important thing I want to say from that flyer is our first Somali Bantu area commissioner, Aiden Muhammad. And that's a big deal. Aiden is right here with this purple banner. You can see this is Aiden. You can see cursor around his face. This young man is right now serving as our soccer coach, the soccer program director. He is also um, an outreach person. He is he and his brother Sayad. Uh, they go out in the community. They have been leading the community, keeping them safe during COVID pandemic, which was a huge thing because this community does not have a system. This community does not have a written language that we could have used. So everything had to be recorded and communicated and taking care of them. And they did that marvelous job. Hours and hours of work. And now Aiden um, is now a Hilltop Area Commissioner. This is the first in this community. This is the history that we say that we are celebrating, we are making history. So when we protect our young people, when we educate our community and our young people especially, when we empower young people and their families, we make sure that there is no, no more food insecurity, there is no more other basic needs crisis, the housing is covered, the all other social services are done to make sure that the crisis you know, situation is over. But then, where do we do go next? Where are we going next from there is that our young people become, become leaders. Our young people are the one who are sitting at the table. So for last two years, and this is my third year now as the Hilltop Area Commissioner, now Aiden is there. I don't need to be there. Now we have the right community representative from right there, and that's our goal generation to generation and that's this is this part is my message to the people who are my age or older than me the board members the directors the, the people who are investing in communities please keep investing in your masajid keep investing in churches keep investing in whatever because we need all of that if we didn't have masajid good masajid good churches good organization we couldn't be doing what we are doing now but at the same time this is the time then you all also invest into social services and community development organization. This is the time. If you won't do it now, when are you gonna do it? And why I say it, because when Aiden becomes 
the health job area commissioner. And there are others who are now looking up to him. This is not, this is the beginning. This is the beginning of the mainstream leadership. Here is one person who was in, in a small community and now is looking after for the all issues, is being informed, educated, participating in the main vision of the whole neighborhood, a large neighborhood, a very diverse neighborhood with several neighborhoods within that one area commission zone. So that's, that's where we are heading. And that's exactly when you start actually working with the black people, the black organizations and others who have gone through different things, they have their differences, but how am I going to work hand in hand? And actually talking of the issue beyond these Facebook conversations, beyond these Twitter conversations, beyond this, just, you know, in Masjid you go, you sit down and once in a year and do a Black History Month event. I didn't want to do it. I told Sister Dorothy, I'm not interested because I am a community organizer. We need to be walking the talk. We just can't talk, talk, talk. So this event today is important to our organization. And the all people from our organization, all of our pantry, pantry people, our reading warrior team, our soccer coaches, everybody understand this part. We are part of this movement. And when Aiden is today is one, we have an health top area commission. I want to see one, you guys, you guys have to be on the Senate seat. You guys have to be on the house seats. You have to be representing the city. You have to go forward because, because not only that you, uh, you know, you have to represent your community, but believe me, because of your diverse experiences, because of your rich experience and your backgrounds as immigrant and refuse, you bring so much more to America. You bring so much more to the table that the community is so much is missing so far. And when you partner with our black leaders, these black moms and dads and, and leaders and pastors, then is the magic will be done. This election has been won by one party and one president because of the organizing of black moms. We know it, everybody knows. And if somebody doesn't know it, then either they don't pay attention or they just don't want to admit it. But this is a true reality of America. So we are here to go hand in hand, to partner to work together and keep making more history. Keep making more history. Unless we do that, we are not gonna be you know, anywhere. Last thing, and I will wrap up my conversation with that is, what is the next step? So now you have a food, free food market that's coming in, inshallah, within a month. You have a soccer league. You had 250 people. You played it. You have an amazing under my wing, my tailored image, and my pathways program that's covering, providing the college mentoring, that's helping young people with career counseling, uh, all kind of things. Mashallah, you guys are providing tutoring services. What is next now? So it looks like we are... Alhamdulillah, we have got a system, we have an infrastructure, we are taking care of food, shelter, housing, we have a helpline, we are working with all of the other organizations, we are serving our community. Now is the time of community development. This year, and I will be talking more and more about it, you will be hearing this from all of our departments, you know, and other people. Now, my project USA this year is dedicating our full energy to community development and investment in the community financial, financial recovery of our community. We are starting new departments. We are you know, opening a job training center. We are opening so many different, we are starting program for micro businesses. We are working on home ownership right now. We are working and going to help you with the career, uh, sorry, credit building. Everything that needs to be done we will start or we will plan to start it this year and we will we our movement now is in the point that we have taken care of the emergency issues we have a system in place to take care of our families our youth our parents and everybody this point on we will make sure that those of us those of our community members who are right now on the taking side they will be transferred to they will be changed into the giving side 
We want to make sure that all of our sisters at home are being, you know, they have the resources so they can start their business or they can get better jobs. Our young people, our older people, we are starting our community garden is starting and it's gonna be a project which will actually, with the goal that all those serious community gardeners they can become farmers and individual farmers and that's our one of our program that we are starting this year. So Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah for all the work that um, the black leaders and black moms and uh, the black movement in general has done for, 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 for USA, for America. And, and now is the time again for us to learn from them, to reach out, to, to follow the path, to join the hands and get our very best out there. Making sure that we don't leave anybody behind. We work hand in hand, we do our best as Muslims and non-Muslims, and we make sure that we are taking this movement to the next step. The caravan is ours. We are part of it. We might not look the same, but we will do what is whatever is needed to do the job. And that's my message and that's my hope from all of everybody, from my directors of program, from my board members, for everybody who's part of our movement, that we are the part of our, our community and our project is USA. Our project is this country and inshallah, we will serve it the best by bringing the justice and liberty and freedom and happiness to everybody who, who needs it. Jazakallah khair. I'm here. If you anybody has any question, I can answer it. And, and I'm giving it back to you, Sister Dorothy. Thank you. Um, it's, as always, perfectly said. Julia has her hand raised. Julia, jump in. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, first, thank you for that fantastic presentation. By far the best presentation I've heard all day um, today. Uh, I had a few questions. Um, you spoke really poignantly about all the advantages and all the programs um, that are involved. Um, but I just wanted, was curious about like the challenges and difficulties that you faced um, throughout um, the implementation um, up to where you all are now um, in the organization and how you're building resilience um, amongst the youth um, as well as the adults and parental generations and grandparents and henceforth. Julia, thank you so much, but I can speak for one more hour to answer your question. <laughs> um, let Julia, me see. Can first. I interrupt and ask you to introduce yourself? Sure. So I'm Julia. I am from Cedar Rapids, Iowa. It is a snow day here. Um, and I'm on the Civil Rights Commission um, for the city of Cedar Rapids. And I am very excited to hear all of these presentations. And I look forward to hearing. Um, what we've already heard and what we're going to hear from henceforth. Hopefully some of my questions make sense and if they don't, then I can definitely allude further. We're so no. happy to have you, Julia. Go right ahead, Zerka. Thank you so much, Julia, and thank you for joining us from Cedar Rapids. That's really is, is, is bigger than I thought. So thank you. Um, you know, I will try to be as concise, but we can definitely, I, and I have been thinking about it. I think these are the questions that needs to be told just to encourage more people, to give them some sense. And I'm always willing to do a separate presentation to, to give more details. But I would say the major issue, I think, I faced being Pakistani and working with the community that was not Pakistani in general, like, you know, because when we started on West Side, we were working with mostly Somali Bantus, other Somalis and, and uh, immig uh, immigrant refugees. And then also the rest of the community is black and Hispanic and I'm, I'm, I don't belong to them ethnically or in that sense. So the major issue was trust. To earn the trust, to break that ice, to understand, and also for me to understand what were the challenges and that, that has been, um, so first two, three years, there was a lot of suspicions against the organization. There was lots of, um, you know, propaganda. There were people who were um, sure that definitely I'm doing it because I'm making money out of it somewhere, somehow all that money, which like, you know, mashallah, alhamdulillah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given me, uh, um, you know, enough money to not only take care of my family, but also invest in the community. So we started on my kitchen, all of that. So funding was a major issue. Um, so far, we none of the masajid have really done any fundraiser for us. Uh, it was very difficult in the beginning 
Um, the first major grant we received was from City Council for the soccer program, and we are humbled for it. Before that, there was a smaller grant for a boy scout from Michael Estinziano at that time, a City Council member. That helped, but not having money has slowed us down. If we had the support of community from the beginning, we could have been you know, way ahead. Right now we are in our sixth year and Alhamdulillah without that financial support, it is successful only because Alhamdulillah me and my husband has put a lot of money in it from our pocket. I borrowed a lot of credit card loans to pay payrolls and everything. And I have worked uh, for free 70, 80 hours a week for now six years. So these are real challenges. And um, I, my hope is that after this presentation and we have another program coming on part seven, if our community finally understand what this organization is all about and what are these young people are doing and we get that support from the community as, as much as we are now, Alhamdulillah, seeing some grants of options now for us because we are older and we, are, we have a, you know, um, a portfolio to show that we actually are doing the work. Um, the, the main issue has been funding and trust. Um, and if you have money, you can do so many things so early, so better, and you can save so many children beforehand than be, because prevention is always cheap. Pre prevention is way cheaper than intervention. So when you have somebody who is already in drugs or already in gangs, it's so much more expensive in so many ways from law enforcement money to cities money than investing into a soccer program and other programs that is fun, that is good, that is healthy. And that's what I think is, is a challenge for our community. And for our immigrant refugee community donors, it's mostly everybody wants to give to masjid, which is very important. So there are two solutions to that. One is either the masajid needs to understand and they need to endorse and partner, really big time partner with social services organizations like ours, or you know, people need to start understanding that the best dawa, the best you know, message that we can go out and give to people as Muslims is through social services. And if that happens, I think our social service organization and others will benefit big time. I hope I answered your question somewhat. Did anyone else have anything else, anything else to share? Anybody else? Okay, guys. Well, thank you so much, everyone, for your participation, your attention. Um, now, we have a 10-minute break until our next speaker, which is Shomari Payne. Um, I think that it's important for you to know why I um, and I'll use my slang words, why I was sweating Shamari literally for days. Um, he, he didn't take a long time to get back to me. It was just that he's busy and he sure enough should be a busy guy. Um, and I will, during our break, I'm going to show the TED talk that um, told me I'm going to go, get in a car and go to Dayton and get this man if he doesn't <laughs> answer my uh, LinkedIn request. So enjoy your break, um, eat. I'm finally also going to um, enjoy some, some tidbits, uh, but please do go ahead and keep your eyes on um, your place and enjoy the TED Talk so that uh, things can really, really make sense, our next portion. Thank you guys again so much. Give me a second to just prepare that uh, share. 